Good afternoon. I have selected an urgent question, which will be taken as the first item of business today. And as a consequence, decision time, I'm afraid, will be pushed back to 5.15. We were already a little bit tight for time. Uh, so our first question is from Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I say I'm grateful for the acceptance of the question. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the reported reform of firefighters' pay and conditions. Minister Annabel Ewing. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Yesterday, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service issued a letter to its staff setting out a proposal on the possible future transformation of the service. Under these proposals, there will be no compulsory redundancies. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service have confirmed that formal negotiations will be conducted through agreed collective bargaining arrangements. The Scottish Government in the 2018-19 draft budget has increased the spending capacity of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service by £15.5 million. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service have been exploring for some time now how best to develop the service to meet new and emerging risks, including how transformation could see the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service do more for the people of Scotland. The Scottish Fire and Rescue Service will be issuing a formal consultation on the future transformation proposals within the next three weeks. In conclusion, I would say, presenting officer at this stage, that the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service has indicated that its proposed reward package would be for a new, expanded role for firefighters, which, of course, is still to be negotiated and agreed with unions. And I welcome the FBU's willingness to engage with the service. Liam Kerr. I thank the Minister for that answer. The public will understand the rationale for changing the fire service, but as I've said before in this chamber, they will have legitimate concerns that this is a way to implement cuts by the back door. The Chief Fire Officer has told firefighters that there will be a small reduction in whole-time firefighter posts. So can the Minister confirm exactly how many full-time equivalent posts will be lost, and can she explain how the service is expected to respond more quickly with fewer firefighters, given that the average time taken to respond to house fires has increased yeah. in almost every council in Scotland? Minister. Uh, well, what I would say to the member is that, uh, the, of course, the uh, decisions about allocation of resources are uh, an operational matter, obviously, for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service as the employer. And what uh, is to be embarked upon is a, a discussion with the FBU about transformation of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and a new and expanded role for uh, firefighters. Uh, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service have confirmed that there will be no compulsory redundancies as is, has been the case since the establishment of the uh, single Scottish Fire and Rescue uh, Service. Uh, and I would say in terms of uh, uh, resources that of course in terms of the press coverage that we have seen in this morning's papers, what the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service are looking at is in terms of a reward for this new expanded role, potential pay increases of up to 20%. And finally, of course, if the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service were able to, be, uh, to, to get back the uh, almost £50 million in VAT that Mr Kerr's Tory colleagues in the House of Commons have refused uh, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service access to, then of course, over the years since the establishment of the single Fire and Rescue Service, they would have had more resources available for each community in Scotland. Yeah. Liam Kerr. I thank the Minister for some of that reply. Presiding officer, it was, of course, the Scottish Conservatives who won the VAT refund for our fire yeah. service, worth £10 million a year. If we could stop the grievance politics and answer my further yeah, questions, yeah, yeah. there are aspects of reform which we can welcome. In particular, I praise Scottish Fire and Rescue for their successful trials of responding to cardiac arrests. I understand a number of lives have been saved thanks to this effort. Mm. But the Fire Brigades Union have said that their members have been given no specific detail about the roles that they will be expected to take on. We understand, for example, that firefighters will take on youth and social prevention work and inspection and enforcement responsibilities. So can the Minister outline the specific duties included within this definition? And also, uh, in talking about the pay rise, will the government publish the methodology which has been used to calculate the proposed pay rise? Minister. Uh, I, well, uh, Presiding Officer, I'm not entirely sure if Mr Kerr is there for saying that the position of the uh, Tories in Scotland is that they would be against seeing firefighters gain uh, a reward for what they were being asked to do, which is an expanded yeah, new that. role yeah, for yeah, firefighters yeah. in uh, the length and breadth of Scotland. It does seem that the Conservative Party is not very enthusiastic about that, a point that will not be lost on uh, the firefighters yeah, yeah. throughout the length and breadth of uh, Scotland. As regards the uh, operational detail about the new expanded role, of course that is a matter uh, for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service 
to, uh, to discuss with the FBU in the context of the formal uh, process, and that is what I understand is about to happen. And finally, again, I would say about the key question about resources, presiding officer. Uh, I, it is, of course, not surprising that the member didn't like the bit about the VAT, but the fact of the matter is that whilst we saw Highways England and Academy schools get uh, be allowed to reclaim VAT, that was precluded by the Tories in Westminster for years and years. In those years, the fire service in Scotland has lost almost £50 million. What I would suggest to the member is that instead of perhaps uh, uh, being la less than supportive about the transformation of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, increased reward for our firefighters, he might want to fight for uh, the money back to Scotland yeah, and the yeah, Scottish yeah, Fire and Rescue yeah, Service. Gillian exactly. Martin. Presiding officer, can the minister give a guarantee that those taking on enhanced responsibilities as a result of the new contract will be given comprehensive training and the resources to effectively carry out their new role? Minister. Uh, well, I would say to Gillian Martin, obviously these are, are matters for the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service, but I am encouraged to note that uh, training uh, is deemed to be uh, crucially important and will uh, play a very vital role uh, in the transformation of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service. And of course, as I said, uh, there have been no compulsory redundancies since the establishment of the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and the Scottish uh, Fire and Rescue Service have confirmed that the proposals that they are putting forward do not involve any compulsory redundancies. Daniel Johnson to be followed by Liam MacArthur. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Scottish Government have been intimately involved in not just the finances and strategies of this transformation project, but the details too, according to a Freedom of Information request received by the Scottish Labour Party. So, can the Minister therefore confirm that she was aware, ahead of yesterday's announcements, about the scale of reductions in firefighters, stations and units? And if that is the case, why didn't she feel that, given the scale of the change, that it was not worth revealing that to Parliament directly? And finally, does she share my concerns from, and those of the FBU that they hadn't received prior sight of the details and that uh, national uh, pay and bargaining mechanisms have effectively been bypassed? Minister. Uh, so, uh, on the, 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 the last point, I just would uh, wish to, to clarify that, of course, I heard uh, Chris McLone, the head of the FBU in Scotland, on GMS uh, this morning, on this morning's radio, and I was concerned to note uh, that due process had not been followed. However, I was also very encouraged at the same time to note uh, the FBU's willingness, nonetheless, to engage in discussion with the Scottish Fire uh, and Rescue Service, and that is right and proper. Uh, uh, yes, uh, the Scottish Government is aware that the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service has been uh, engaged in looking at how we can transform the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service so that it meets the new and emerging risks of 21st century Scotland, and we will continue to offer any support uh, in that process that we can. I would also stress, of course, that the SFRS is the employer. It is in charge of operational matters, uh, and it will be, as employer, getting on to discuss the detail of these uh, proposals uh, with uh, the FBU. Liam MacArthur, to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Simply relying on the goodwill and hard work of staff on the front line to get by is not a long-term sustainable strategy. And it's an important part of protecting fire service to pay workers properly and prevent their living standards from falling. But I, can I follow on from Daniel Johnson's question and ask if the Minister was informed specifically of this offer before it went directly to staff? And how does the enhanced role envisaged for staff in relation to terrorism, medical emergencies and community engagement differ from what they already do? Is this to any extent formalising or recognising existing practices? Minister. Uh, well, the, uh, the letter, I had no knowledge of the letter being sent yesterday uh, and the first I heard of it was when we, we all heard of it. So uh, that's the answer to the, the first uh, question. Uh, on the issue of the expanded role, uh, to, to an extent, it will be the case in terms of, for example, the uh, uh, out-of-hospital uh, cardiac arrest work. That has been going on in some fire stations in Scotland on the basis of a pilot. Uh, however, the proposals would uh, involve uh, expanding that uh, emergency responder uh, uh, aspect of the new expanded role uh, uh, across the country and also looking at uh, 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 an expanded role with regard to terrorism, uh, environmental risk and other uh, matters, including uh, prevention. Uh, so these are the, the absolute, this is the hub of the discussion that will be taking uh, place as between the employer, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service and the FBU within the context of uh, the collective bargaining uh, arrangements, which uh, are very important. And I would hope that the member would uh, do what he could to support that process. John Finney. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I, I welcome the Minister's comments about collective bargaining. As a, as a former full-time official of a staff association, I would have been raging if the employer had bypassed agreed procedures. This isn't an operational matter. Will you direct 
the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service to adhere to these collective bargaining uh, procedures, not only for the benefit of future negotiations for the fire service, but the clear message it would send to others in the public sector? Thank you. Well, I'm happy to, to reiterate what I said in answer, I think, to Mr Johnson, Johnson, which was that when I heard Chris McLone, the head of the FPU in Scotland, on the radio this morning, I was concerned indeed to hear what he had uh, to say on the matter, but I was equally encouraged that nonetheless the FBU stands willing to get round the table and engage in discussions about transformation of uh, the service. And as I stated in my opening answer, presiding officer, the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service have confirmed uh, that formal negotiations will be conducted through agreed collective uh, bargaining arrangements. I hope that that gives the member the assurance that he was seeking. Can I thank the Minister and members for taking that urgent question. Uh, members who still have questions to ask, there are a number of outstanding questions. There will be other opportunities later in the week if you wish to, uh, or next week, if you wish to raise it again. We we'll turn now, though, to portfolio questions and on communities, social security and equalities.